So we're going to start the way we always start things like this. Okay. Who is your favourite Star Trek character? The barrel that takes out Worf. <laughs> Put the clip in. Look out! Jonathan Frakes is an actor known for a singular role, that of Commander William T. Riker. Luckily for Frakes, the character he will now be forever synonymous with is a space-cruising, alien puss-crushing slab of man with a beard so legendary they literally rewrote the entire show just to justify it. Okay, so the beard, explain. Okay, so for anyone who's not seen Star Trek The Next Generation, Jonathan Frakes, as I mentioned, plays a character called William Riker, and in the first season of that show, he plays a clean-shaven but still somewhat competent crusher of alien trim. What's a knockout like you doing in a computer-generated gin joint like this? Waiting for you. As an aside, how much Star Trek The Next Generation have you actually watched? Uh, bits and pieces, but mostly just for researching videos. So that means you're not aware of, like, the Commander T. Riker step then, are you? No. Do you like the Picard manoeuvre, which we yeah. spoke about in the video before, which is that uh, um, Captain Picard readjusting his uniform when he stands up? Um, for some reason, Jonathan Frakes, in almost every scene he's in, just puts his leg up like that. All the time. He just puts his leg up like so. Like, there was one way, it's like he stands up out of a chair and he stands up backwards over the chair like this. Talking of manoeuvres in Star Trek, yes. that always just reminds me of the epic manoeuvre with Geordie. Oh man, put the clippings, that thing's great. <laughs> I'm a big fan of stuff like, you know, the Riker step. Because I love the idea of actors doing stuff in a cool way when they're not supposed to. And like, the best person like that is obviously Jackie Chan in the film, I forget which one, I think it's Police Story or something like that, where he's eating noodles. And it took him like 14 takes to get it right. <laughs> Because he insisted on doing it in a cool way like that. So he basically becomes Dante from Devil May Cry 3 when he answers the phone. Jackie Chan does that in real life in that film, and it's fucking brilliant. That sounds like Revolver Ocelot levels of showing up. Oh my god, the, like, the revolver juggling scene in Metal Gear Solid 3. Like, there's a guy on YouTube somewhere who did that in real life. Like, to show that it could be done. He does the full ocelot spinning routine and juggles the guns. It's like, oh my god, would you even mess with the guy who does that? And then later, in that game, you see him fending off bees with it. No tactical advantage, eh, Snake? Can you spin revolvers fast enough to slap bees out of the air? I think not. We've strayed too far from the beard. We have, haven't we? So we should talk more about it. And like, obviously, Riker not having a beard in the first season of Star Trek Next Generation is in keeping with the generally established lore of the Star Trek universe that beards aren't all that common amongst human males. So I think virtually every human male in that show, besides Riker in season two onwards, is clean shaven. Which makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, given all the cool shit that must exist in the future, right? Can you imagine how clean and close of a shave an alien future razor would give you? So when did The Beard first appear? In season two. And what changed between seasons one and two to make him grow that beard? Not much, because like Frakes has always said, I don't really like shaving, and when I'm not working, I'll generally, I'll not shave, I'll just grow out a beard. And between season one and season two of Star Trek, there was a writer's strike, which like obviously put the show on hiatus, and during that hiatus, Frakes grew out his beard, and ended up walking in for rehearsals for season two, with a beard I think even Kratos from God of War would compliment in between elbow dropping hydras. And do you know who else agreed, Brad, that the beard looked awesome? Gene fucking Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, who saw Frakes with the beard during rehearsals for season two and went, you are not shaving that off. You have got the look of a wise and sea captain or some shit. That's glorious. You're keeping it. My favourite part about this story, though, is that Roddenberry specifically called out the fact that Frakes with a beard looked like a sea captain. So, so the idea of like Star Trek is that they're like, exploring new like new worlds, and like obviously that's just an extension of like you know back in the day of explorers on a ship. It's like that's it's an extension of that idea basically, and the fact that he specifically wanted like you know the makeup crew to sculpt his beard to make him look more nautical. <laughs> and we can I think we can agree that if you. Put a picture of Riker behind me and Photoshop a sea captain's hat on his head. I can see him being on the front of a box of bird's eyes fish fingers, can you? you in gonna... fact, in fact, <laughs> put 
his face with a sea can talent on a box of bird's eyes fish fingers. And I bet he doesn't look that much out of place, does it? He does look like a sea captain. He looks like he could be commanding a ship back in like the olden days. There's definitely the comment section buzzing right now with a comment about Riker's fish fingers. <laughs> Fishy fingers more like. So as a direct result of Roddenberry's intervention on his behalf, Frakes was allowed to keep the beard for season two. On the proviso that, as noted, he allowed the makeup department to sculpt it to make it look more nautical and authoritative. I don't need your fantasy women. Oh, you're so stolid. You weren't like that before the beard. And you know what the best part about Riker growing a beard is? What? It is generally agreed by critics and fans that the beard coincides with a general uptick in the quality of the writing and acting on the show itself, leading to the coining of the term, growing the beard. I'm assuming that's the antithesis of jumping the shark. Yes, if people don't know, jumping the shark is like a trope that's used to describe the exact moment a show's quality just declines downwards. Like after the scene in Happy Days where Fonzie jumps over a shark and that was other examples you can use like the Simpsons one that a lot of people use is the episode of the Arm and Tanzarian episode where Principal Skinner is revealed to not be Principal Skinner. It's basically a stupid moment that like completely draws you out of the show and signals it's dec a declining quality. Growing the beard is the exact opposite of that and it's a moment you can pinpoint where the show's quality improves. And because obviously the only real difference between season one and season two is that Riker has a beard, that is now the symbol of just the show becoming awesome. Do you know what my favourite part is? What? Jonathan Frakes himself is aware of the trope and is proud of it. Someone, I, I would be. Someone asked him at a fan convention for Star Trek, so are you aware of the term growing the beard? He went, yeah. What do you think about it? I love it. It's great that my beard is now like a signifier for just a show being awesome. <laughs> the thing is though, if Frakes had shaved that beard off, the term growing the beard might very well have been hiring the Pratt. Because I'd say like Parks and Recreation got much better when they hired Chris Pratt full time. So it could have been hiring the Pratt. And that'd hiring be amazing. the Pratt! Well, I think we can all agree like Parks and Rec gets way better when they got Chris Pratt in full time. When they realise, oh my god, this guy's amazing, just put him in every episode. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. When do you reckon our hiring the Pratt moment was? Oh, it's the one we got drunk talking about gazelles. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it is. It's drinking the booze for us. And unless I'm guessing fans might have a different idea. So yeah, fans of the show, when is your growing the beard moment for this? I'm quite curious to think when people thought the quality of the show like noticeably improved, or if it never has. We haven't had it yet. We still suck. We still on a downward decline. <laughs> you know what? We jumped the shark in the first episode. It's been declining ever since. So I'm guessing there's some people like, oh yeah, these, these episodes suck now. They used to be so good back in the day. Despite the fact nothing has changed whatsoever to the point where we still keep the same fucking green screen. <laughs> As awesome as the show became after Riker grew a beard, it did cause a minor plot hole in the fact that there is no explanation for why Commander Riker, between episodes, seemingly out of nowhere, grows a beard. You said earlier that it's not particularly common for anyone in that universe to actually have a beard. No, I think the most famous example is like alternate universe evil Spock, who has the goatee. <laughs> so, which has now become like, is another thing Star Trek so was like, which is a trope for evil. He's just growing the evil goatee. Because <laughs> now goatees are associated with evil, unless you're Tony Stark. But you said at the start they changed the show in order to include the beard. Yes, because obviously they never referenced the beard directly in season two, but in season seven, a full five years later, someone actually asked Riker, dude, what's the deal with the beard? And he explains to them, I was just sick of people saying I look really young. I got tired of hearing how young I looked. What was it that uh, Lieutenant Boylan used to call you? Ensign Babyface. <laughs> yeah. He then goes on to note that growing a beard is an ancient earth and custom, ancient being the operative word in that sentence, and it was historically seen as a symbol of like masculinity and virility, something he didn't exactly exude in the first season of the show. So he described the beard as being an ancient custom. Yeah, and that's the retcon the writers included to explain why no one else but Riker has a beard, because it's not really a thing anyone's aware of anymore. Apparently men in that universe aren't aware of the fact that if you just let your hair grow, you grow a beard. <laughs> The beard is an ancient and proud tradition. Mm. I think it's a sign of strength. The thing to remember though is that this explanation was given in season seven of the show, a full five seasons after the beard made its debut. 
So it's five seasons later and the beard has already become a symbol of the show getting better. Yes. And yet they felt the need to justify it. Because even though nobody gave all that much of a shit about where the beard came from, the writers couldn't leave well enough alone and had to explain its origins. <laughs> Which makes me laugh because it means in the Star Trek universe, even beards get a backstory. Since it's the topic of today's video, Brad, what's your favourite example of a writer explaining something in a story that didn't need explaining but felt they had to anyway? It's got to be the vulnerability of the Death Star that they completely... The entire prequel film focused on how it was intentional oh, because yeah, the fans he, made fun of it. He intentionally included a single weakness in the Death Star that would like to be destroyed in one fucking bullet. That's a hell of a thing to get past like Darth Vader and Palpatine, isn't it? One of my favourite examples of it is in Dragon Ball, and it's the two questions of, why don't Saiyans age? Why doesn't their hair change? And Vegeta explains in like two separate episodes, um, one, Saiyans are a warrior race, so they stay in their prime for much longer, so they can fight longer, and two, a Saiyan's hair never changes from the day they're born. Which means that Broly and Raditz were born with that giant ass head of hair on the day. I feel sorry for Goku's mum with that shit. <laughs> Just like a giving birth to a pineapple. So that's the explanation for why Goku never gets a haircut. Yeah. It's the fact that a Saiyan's hair never changed from the day he's born. Just the idea of answering a question no one asked and inadvertently ruining the entire fucking series. Like the Star Wars one of like... It doesn't matter that it was insane. Like, the idea is it's symbolic of like, you know, the arrogance of the Empire. That this tiny mistake, they overlooked it thinking like, you know, their power was absolute. It's symbolic of the fact that there is always like a chink in someone's armour, regardless of how strong you think they are. It's like, no, actually it was a secret rebel plan all along. Well, it was the same with the solo one. Like every one of the prequel movies is basically just going to be callback. I think Honor's trailer said it, it was callback the movie. Because the like the asking answering questions like where did he get his jacket from? No one gives a where, fuck. Where did he get his gun oh, from? Oh. What about those weird things hanging from the Millennium Falcon? We need to know the origin of them. Well, the one that gets me is that Princess Leia is in Rogue One, mm. when it goes directly into the start of like a New Hope. Well, that means though that when she's talking to Darth Vader, she's so clearly talking out of her ass. It's, I'm on a diplomatic mission. You know, ten minutes earlier, Darth Vader was cutting down Rebel soldiers, and he saw a pod go to her ship. <laughs> <laughs> like, he saw it with his own fucking eyes. He witnessed it happen. And she, the idea that, that completely ruins that movie because it means Princess Leia knows she's lying. <laughs> and we know Darth Vader can tell when people are lying. She's got the force. Yeah, but she also has the force. Yeah. Because, I mean, she has the amazing power of Fly force flight. <laughs> <laughs> Never stop. Never fucking stop.